welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's my third and final episode about cooling a Raspberry Pi 4. In the previous two videos we used a bash script to stress out and monitor the temperature of a Pi 4 in a range of different setups, including running the Pi 4 in its official case, with a small heatsink, with a slightly larger heatsink, with a Pi Maroni fan shim, with a 40mm Noctua fan in a custom 3D printed mount, and finally using an ice tower cooler from 52 Pi. Now, the last three of those solutions I've mentioned all gave us good or very good cooling performance, but some people do want to have a silent Raspberry Pi, and so in this video I'm going to be looking at a range of a passive cooling solutions. Specifically, we're going to start out looking at this, which is a Flirk case for a Raspberry Pi. In fact, it's actually a Kodi branded Flirk case, but it is basically a Flirk case. And the Flirk case is something a lot of you have asked me to look at. It's a very interesting case because it's an aluminium case for a Raspberry Pi with a lug inside which contacts the top of a system on a chip. So the whole case becomes a heatsink. So we're going to look at that and how it performs. But I'm also going to look at what's in this box, which is kind of the opposite idea to the, the flirt case. The flirt case is basically a case which becomes a heatsink. Whereas here, this box contains two large heat sinks which bolt onto the top and bottom of the pie, which effectively become a case. So I want to check out that as well. So here we've got the two possibilities, if you like, of having either a case as heatsink or heatsink as case. So let's go and see how these perform. So, here we have the Kodi Edition Flirk case for the Raspberry Pi 4. You can see the Kodi branding on the end there. So, uh, let's get it out of the box. It should be straightforward. Here we are, sitting inside on a little, little bag. There we are, and uh, out of here it comes. And there we are. This is the, uh, the Kodi Edition uh, Flirk case. Very nice product. A soft touch sort of plastic on the top and an uh, aluminium body. And I'm sure you're wondering about the price of this. I paid uh, £18 for this from the Pi Hut in the UK, although you can get the uh, non Kodi uh, edition version of the Flirt case for about £16 in the UK. And in the United States, it seems to be sold for about uh, $16, whether or not it's the Kodi edition on Amazon and other sites like that. But uh, do be aware the Kodi edition version of this case is a limited edition, so it obviously might get more expensive as, as they run out. Anyway, let's uh, open it up and show you how it basically works. The base is there, and you can see here, hopefully, this is the lug which will contact the system on a chip on a Pi and turn the whole case into a heatsink. And to make that work, there is a little uh, thermal pad here, as you can see. So what we now need to do is to put that thermal pad onto our Raspberry Pi 4. And here we have the Raspberry Pi 4 with its system on a chip all waiting for the thermal pad. So I'll just uh, remove the backing from it and just fit it on the top like this. Always tricky to put it on exactly the right place. That's not too bad, that'll do. And that goes on there. And then I now need to remove the uh, second layer of uh, protective stuff. The adhesive on the other side will come off and get it off. There we are like that. That's all uh, ready. So we can now take the pie and fit it in the float case, although I've just noticed I haven't removed the micro SD card. Must do that or things won't work properly. And uh, here is the case, and you can see the lug there, which will uh, clearly contact the uh, thermal pad on the Pi. And could I have put the thermal pad directly onto the lug rather than straight onto the system on the chip? Yes, I'm sure I could, but I think it's easy to get it in the right place, sticking it onto the Pi. Anyway, we can now put this into the case, and the one thing to note here is that the 3.5mm jack sticks out slightly, so drop it in from this side and then through there, and it drops onto the holes, which seems to be in the right place, I think, there. But just tip that back so I can see, yes, and the, oh yeah, that's it, that's gone in exactly the right place. And we can now take the, the top, which will drop in like that. This really is a straightforward construction. So, and I just need to drop in some screws. And uh, there we are, we now have our Pi 4 all encased in this uh, lovely Code Edition float case. And uh, if you're wondering what Kodi is, if you don't know, Kodi is a media player, which you could install on your Pi by putting on the distro, for example, at Libra Lec, as I showed you in a recent video. But uh, other than that, I think 
we're all raring to go, so let's get this thing connected up and test out its thermal performance. Right, I've now got the Pi 4 running in the Flerk case, and just before we do the temperature tests, I thought I should let you know that earlier I applied the latest firmware update for the Raspberry Pi 4, the October 2019 firmware update, by going to a terminal and first of all doing a sudo apt and uh, update, and after that a uh, sudo apt and upgrade, and then finally a uh, sudo apt install and a rpi eprom like that, if I got it right, to install the new eprom update utility. And uh, with that completed, it was then just necessary to do a reboot of the, uh, the Pi. And to uh, check everything had worked by uh, launching a terminal and doing a sudo rpi eprom update to confirm that the current and latest versions were the same. And I would caution that you shouldn't do any update like this unless you backed up your Pi first, you're prepared to take the consequences of an update going wrong. Now, this particular firmware update will decrease the power consumption of both the USB controller and the system on the chip on a Pi, and it'll therefore cause it to run a bit cooler. And you might therefore be thinking this will compromise the integrity of my tests across the three videos. And to some extent, that is true. The Pi should now run a bit cooler. But in the previous test and my previous two cooling videos, I had applied the previous firmware update for the USB controller to make it use less power. And so in practical terms, I think the Pi should now be running a couple of degrees cooler than it would have been before the previous update and about sort of three or four or five degrees cooler than a non-updated Pi. But I thought I should let you know I have applied this update before we run the tests in this video. Anyway, let's now go back to real time while the Pi has been idling for a few minutes before running the tests. And the test we're going to run is this one I've used previously, which basically clears the screen, performs a little loop uh, seven times. Inside that loop, it takes a temperature measurement. It then uses sysbens to stress out the Pi system or the chip factoring prime numbers uh, up to a value of 25,000. And when it's finished that, it takes a final temperature measurement. And this test should run in about 10 minutes unless the Pi is throttling, which it shouldn't in this scenario. So let's get rid of that and go to the terminal and uh, run the test. And uh, as you can see, the Pi has been idling at about 38 degrees, which isn't bad in the, the Flerk case. I should uh, point out that all the tests are in favor of the, the configurations we're trying in this video because I've applied the new firmware update and also the ambient isn't quite as high as in previous tests, which were done over the summer. The ambient here today is about 23 degrees. It was about 24, 25 in this room when I ran the tests previously. But anyway, let's let these tests complete. And there we are, it's finished. And this is a very impressive set of a passive cooling results. And in case you're wondering, the Kodi case has got a little bit warm, but I just mean a little bit warm, perfectly safe to touch, but quite pleasantly warm actually in, in November. So uh, that's, that's not a problem at all. And let's put the results onto the table with some results from our previous two videos. And as you can see, they're very impressive, clearly massively better than using the uh, official case with no cooling, but also better results at the end of this than my Noctua fan and heatsink rig and uh, better results than the Parmaroni Fanshim. They don't quite beat the results using the Ice Tower cooler, but they are very, very good results. In fact, these are such good results that what I'm going to do before I move on to my next passive cooling test is to rerun the test with my Noctua fan and heatsink and the Fanshim and the Ice Tower, just to give us absolutely comparable numbers with the Pi running the October 2019 firmware update and in my current ambient. Well, I've now put back together my Noctua fan and heatsink cooling rig on the Pi, and uh, this has delivered some uh, great results like this. This is finishing up about 12 degrees cooler than when I used this uh, previously with the previous firmware and in a slightly different ambient. And I've also put the Pi Moroni fan shim back on the Raspberry Pi 4 and run the test again and got uh, these results 
which are actually 14 degrees cooler at the end than when I previously tested the fan shim, which is just amazing. And I've also taken everything apart yet again and put the ice tower cooler back on the Raspberry Pi 4. And yes, my Raspberry Pi 4 is getting fed up of having coolers fitted and taken off it. But anyway, I've run the tests again with the ice tower cooler and got these results, which are finishing up about eight degrees cooler than previously. So all of these amazing results. And if we put this all together on the table, including also the Flirk case, I think everything can be seen properly in context. Clearly here, all of the active cooling solutions are outperforming the Flirk case. The Flirk case results are still very good, but clearly what is going on here is not explained by the couple of degrees less than the ambient in the room in which I'm testing. It has to be explained by the new firmware update for the Raspberry Pi 4, which I have installed, which I have now realized is a September 2019 update, not an October 2019 update, and I've applied it in November. So really we have to say hats off here to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. They have done clearly a very, very good job with this new firmware update. It does make a very significant difference to the temperature of the Raspberry Pi 4. So this is very good news. It's turned this video into a video about something slightly different than what I started out making, but uh, it is great to see the Raspberry Pi 4 running cooler with uh, the previous solutions I've tested. So I'm glad I took a bit of time. It's been quite a bit of time to test all this out. So we've got proper test results. So let's now move on to look at our final passive cooling solution. Now, shall we take a look at another passive cooling solution for the Pi 4? And uh, what I've got here specifically is the aluminium heatsink case for the Raspberry Pi 4, which I purchased from the Pi Hut for a £12. Although the only branding on the end here is a TPH002. Sounds like some type of a early George Lucas movie, doesn't it? But uh, you can get heat sinks and case things very like this, more sorts of suppliers. Uh, there's one on Adafruit called the aluminium metal heatsink Raspberry Pi 4 case for a uh, $24.95 and there's various ones on Amazon starting from about $7.99. So uh, let's open it up. You'll see the sort of thing I'm talking about. Here we are. Oh, lots of pieces. Little bag. Oh, it's all easy to get into. There we are. There's, there's one piece of it. There's the other piece of it. So as you can see, the pie goes in the middle of these. And uh, down here we've got the usual screws and things like that and things to put it together. And it looks like, if I get those out, we've got, yes, we've got three heat pads here. So we can put heat pads not just on the system or the chip, but also on the, uh, the memory and the uh, USB controller. So let's go to the top of our Pi, and the heat pads need to be fitted here on the system, on the chip, on the memory, and on this controller. And I think I'll fit them by the magic of filmmaking, and uh, there they are, all in place. So if we now go back to the heatsink, or at least the top heatsink, you can see this is the three places which will contact the pads. So you can just take the pie with the pads on there and just drop it into place, obviously in the right place first time. That's quite important. Make sure our holes are lined up. I think they are. That seems to be pretty good. And uh, I'll now take the, uh, the top, which I've already threaded the screws through to make my life easier. So in theory, or the bolts, or whatever we want to call them, uh, this will just drop on like that, I think. That looks pretty good. And so we can now take uh, Allen the key and uh, put these in place. And uh, there we are. It's now fitted, and that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? You can hopefully see what I was saying earlier about this being a heat sink or two heat sinks that become a case. And uh, there it is, hopefully another good passive cooling solution for the Raspberry Pi 4. Right, I've now got the Pi up and running again, and this great big piece of metal on the top of it doesn't seem to have shorted anything out. So if we go to the desktop, here we are back with our terminal, and we'll run the test. And there we are, it's finished, and another set of uh, good results. If we put those onto our table, you'll see it's running a couple of degrees higher than the uh, Flirk case, but really they're, they're very similar. And uh, if I put my hand on top of the thing, it's got, uh, 
It's got slightly warm, maybe very, very slightly warmer than the, uh, the flirt case, I don't know, but not, not massively warm. Again, nice to uh, warm your hands on in the, in the winter. But really, both of these passive cooling solutions we've looked at in this video are very effective. I would recommend either one to cool a Raspberry Pi 4. So, here we are at the end of another Raspberry Pi 4 cooling video, and we've learned two things. Firstly, that the latest firmware update for the Raspberry Pi 4 has a significant impact on the operational temperature of the board, so again, many thanks, congratulations to the Raspberry Pi Foundation for that fantastic software update. Secondly, we've learned that both of the passive cooling solutions I've looked at in this video are very good. They both give very good results, particularly with that firmware update in place. But you'll never get quite as good a result with passive cooling as you will with active cooling, such as the ice tower. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.